Okay, welcome back. So today, we're going to take a look at a somewhat controversial topic, which is aging of guitars. So right here, we are looking at one of my oldest guitars. This is an American Stratocaster, and as you might be able to see there in the corner of the headstock, this is a Fender 60th Anniversary Stratocaster. What does that mean? Well, for starters, it means you get a nice little Fender 60th Anniversary badge there and a nice little Fender 60th Anniversary badge there. Now, there's some things that are talked about in the guitar industry, right? Some things that people like and don't like. Um, so let's go through those lists and see what's real and what's a myth. First of all, finish. So back in the day, Right, guitar makers used to use nitrocellulose finish. Um, spoiler alert, nitrocellulose is very hazardous to work with, and it's also very flammable, and uh, it doesn't hold up that well over time. People like that. They like the old, checked, aged look on the guitar. And uh, as we're zooming in here, you can see that despite this guitar being 15 years old and having the heck played out of it, um, well, there is no finish checking to be seen. So taking a closer look at the body here, you can see that there's very little damage anywhere on this thing. This is not nitrocellulose. This is some kind of polyurethane polyester finish. One of those two, hard to tell which personally. Um, basically, it's plastic. It's plastic varnish that just about everything you buy that's made of wood will be sealed in. Now, of course, there are different formulations and things like that for guitars or for other pieces of furniture, but for example, this table underneath here, that's got poly finish on it too. And there are some advantages and some disadvantages. Let's see if I can point out any of the disadvantages to you. Aha! So if we angle it just right, you can see polyurethane does scratch. Now, there are some people who think that having a nitrocellulose finish will make your guitar sound better, or this or that. Um, that kind of sounds ridiculous to me, but I can't prove or disprove it, so I'm not gonna delve too far into that. But I will say this, in terms of aging, you wouldn't know this guitar is 15 years old and that it's been played a lot. And I'm a pretty careful guitar owner, but um, it's had its fair share of falls and dings. When I was moving into college my sophomore year, I let my dad carry the guitar case, hard shell case, and apparently one of the latches was uh, not closed. And so, you know, we're holding the guitar, right? Carrying the case sideways. And then the case just flops open and the guitar falls, boom, face down, four feet right on the ground. I ran over there. I was a little worried. I picked it up. Literally not a scratch on the thing. So, polyurethane finish. So you can see the screws are kind of old metal, right? They look aged. Not, you know, 100 years old, but not quite as shiny and new as when the guitar was fresh. Same deal with the bridge, just a little bit of aging there. Okay, I don't know how well you can see that, but that is literally the only blemish anywhere on this guitar, and Surprise, surprise, it's in the neck pocket. This happens on almost every bolt-on Fender-style guitar you're ever gonna see after enough time. So let's talk about the neck. Now, as we said, this guitar is 15 years old, and um, something that keeps me up at night as a maker of parts casters is the frets. I'm gonna shell out all this money, I'm gonna buy a nice neck, a bunch of nice parts, put them together, play the guitar a lot, and then a few years from now, the frets are gonna to be toast, and I'm gonna to be faced with a serious problem. Do I attempt to refret? Do I pay for a refret, or do I buy a new neck? And you know, that, that's something that kinda of bugs me and that I think about when I'm building parts casters. And it's led me to shell out for some stainless steel frets. But I think this guitar is a perfect example of why that's kinda of, kind of more hype and fear than fact. So, this guitar is from 2006 and I played this guitar exclusively for like almost 10 years, and the frets are fine. 
There's a little bit of a different feel over the edge of the fingerboard. I think that's as much rounding off of the wood as it is the actual metal. Um, but as far as the frets go, they don't pose any problems. Are they a little bit lower than perhaps when I bought the guitar? Yeah, I bet they are. Is there any spot on the neck where you have dead notes or you know where you can't bend because you can't dig in? No. There's in fact zero problems with the playability of this guitar. You know, the frets could get quite a bit lower before they actually cause any playing difficulties whatsoever. And, you know, I play all over the neck on this guitar. I, I am position agnostic here. I'm playing, you know, your cowboy chords, I'm playing at the 12th fret, 15th fret, you name it, right? Um, and if you do that, if you play all over the neck, you're not really gonna wear out any particular frets. If all you do is play C, G, and D, yeah, you might have some, some wear on these first three frets more than the other ones. But if you play all over, I don't think that's something you really have to worry about. Um, so, you know, maybe, yes, if you are playing for hours a day, if you're sweating, if you're gigging, um, you may have faster fretwear than I do. But I think this is kind of an overblown issue. I kept worrying for years that this guitar, the frets were going to get too low and I wouldn't play well. And, um, well, I still play this guitar a lot. And that's never happened. So I don't think this is something we need to be afraid of. Um, I will say this, most frets are made of nickel alloys and not everybody uses the same nickel alloy. If you've ever played a PRS, uh, especially a higher end one, you can kind of feel the, the difference in their frets. Um, you know, so a, a lot of manufacturers do use slightly different compositions for their fret materials. Uh, the hardness can vary. Uh, and of course, sweat. Sweat is the enemy here, right? I mean, uh, the friction of your fingers over the metal, sure, will do a little bit of damage, but I think the main culprit here is the sweat, especially people with more acidic sweat. Thankfully, I'm not one of those. I don't really have to worry about this, but you know, your mileage may vary a little bit. Well, let's talk about the rest of the neck as well. So this is kind of your standard kind of semi-gloss kind of finish on here. It's been worn down quite a bit over the years the point where it's not nearly as sticky as it first was, and I can tolerate it. There's a little ding, actually, right there on the fifth fret. I've never really noticed while I was playing. I just found it right now. Um, but as far as this neck goes, there's kind of an interesting story here. So uh, unfortunately, at one point in time, I tried to sell this guitar. Uh, I had student loan payments with pretty high interest rate, and uh, I kind of wanted to pay those off more than I needed multiple guitars. So I brought this to your big box stores and uh, none of them wanted it. They all said, we don't want to buy this guitar. The neck is warped. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute, wait. You're telling me that this premium American made Stratocaster has a warped neck. And I said, yeah, the neck is warped. We looked at it, we don't want it. And I said, how could that be? This guitar is 10 years old. How could the neck be warped? Why would it just start happening now? So I was pretty upset about that. Um, and, you know, it didn't cause a ton of playability issues, but at the time there was a little bit more buzzing, especially on the uh, higher three strings, especially from about, I don't know, seven, 12 area or seven on up really. Um, and I didn't really know what to do. At the time I didn't know how to work on guitars at all. Uh, so I did the only thing that I really thought I could do, which is instead of storing it just like this flat, in its hard shell case on the floor, I decided I was gonna stand it up in a gig bag. And, you know, I, I just did that and then I played other guitars because I was kind of unhappy with this one at the time. And I came back a few months later um, and basically it was fine. Uh, all of the issues that I had previously had just disappeared. So, you know, that's, that's a thing. Older guitars, they sometimes they do things and it's hard to tell why they do them. There's a lot of variables in this system of a guitar, and it's kind of difficult to pin them all down. So who knows what caused that neck warp? Who knows if storing it upright was even the thing that fixed it? But um, it's kind of amazing that at, at one point this guitar started to kind of fall out, and then it got right back. And ever since uh, I started storing it standing up, zero issues. I don't even think I've done a truss rod adjustment on this guitar honestly, since that happened six years ago. It's incredibly stable for whatever reason now. 
So those are just some things that happen with guitars over time. Uh, and usually there's gonna be a fix to that problem unless you really let it snowball and get out of control. That's